there's a brand new color plugin that just dropped for Final Cut Pro, and I am so ecstatic about it. It is absolutely exceptional. I'm not a colorist, so I need to rely on tools from people that understand color. And so Eric Lentz and Christian Mate Grapp, they joined forces and made the best possible coloring tool for Final Cut Pro, specifically if you really like film emulation. There are a lot of film emulation tools out on the market, but the problem this is the big problem with those film emulation tools. They're usually exceptionally expensive and the performance hit that your machine takes when you use those tools. So what if you could have a plugin that was a fifth the cost, stayed very performant, but you had all the benefits of the absolutely beautiful visuals that film emulation can bring? And so that is where Emulate comes into play. Now, this video is not sponsored or anything, but I am close friends with the creators of this plugin and they were super generous and hooked me up with an affiliate link. So if you use the links down below, it does support the channel. So emulate, maybe it looks complicated because there's a whole bunch of tools, but really it's so dead simple to use. Mostly you'll just be relying on the top two effects here, but if you want to get even more granular with it, you can rely on these alternate effects. So basically I'm just gonna click and drag the look development tool onto my adjustment clip that's on top of everything. And I'm gonna make sure that my effects inspector is opened up. It's gonna look like, wow, I have a whole lot of options. Where do I even start? But really, it's pretty darn simple. You just need to know two things with this plugin. One, you need to know what camera you were shooting with if you want the best results. And two, you need to know what look you like the most. So it's pretty simple. First, I know that I shot all this on an iPhone, so it's very easy. I'm gonna switch in my camera settings. And let's go to Apple, Apple Log 2. And yes, you can work with multiple cameras on a single timeline. I'm not gonna get into that whole workflow, although this tool is excellent at it, but you need to check out Eric Lentz's deep dive on this particular plugin because he does such a great job of breaking everything down, explaining it, and he actually knows what in the world he's talking about. After that, we'll select our look. Now this is where the fun comes in. So we'll go to emulate look and you'll see you have neutral exposure and ETTR. I'm not gonna get into the differences, but for my footage, I got the neutral exposure. Again, go check out Eric's video. And let's just load in 16 mil. We'll just start there and you'll see the vibrancy that this brings to this shot. I absolutely love what it does with the skies and it just is insane. It might even be a little bit too punchy, so we might need to dial that back but fortunately it's really easy. So for example, let's say, okay, I've got too much saturation up here in the sky. Well, you're gonna go up to the density sliders here at the very top. So let's go ahead and just bring back the blues, just, you know, a tad. We don't want it too over the top vibrant and maybe we want a little bit more vibrancy in the greens. We can bring that up. You can see we've got some reds and stuff down here. So we could crank that if we wanted to, but I'm actually gonna leave those just looking at this footage, you can see how beautiful it looks with this LUT we've applied. But it's not just the LUT we've applied. There's so much more going on under the hood, which I'll get into here in just a bit. But you also see that you have a bunch of sliders like your exposure and your contrast. And your first thought might be, oh, okay, I need to like correct all of my footage from these sliders. But that's not what this is for. This is for designing a look over your entire video. So you're gonna need to go shot by shot correcting your footage like you would typically with any LUT. But then at the end, you can say, okay, now we've got everything dialed. I want it to all be, you know, on the darker side of things or on the brighter side of things. That's what these sliders are for. And you can, of course, get them set up accordingly. Maybe you want a little bit more warmth. Let's just bring up my high temp. And then there's also this setting for film compression, which I love. This is like, ah, oh man, I just love how the slider works. It just brings this nice highlight roll off. So if I drag this up, you can see how it's, it's kind of compressing the really bright parts of the image, maybe bringing less contrast to them, but it's, it's, you know, there's so much magic going on with this slider. I love it. So we get a lot of detail up here in the sky. It's beautiful. And maybe we feel like, okay, my image is a little oversaturated. We can just back that off with the saturation slider. It's super easy. There's also this beautiful vignette option. Like I said, though, there's a lot more under the hood with this particular plugin. And that is because they bring in stuff like the bloom slider and the halation slider and the film grain. And it does such an exceptional job with these different tools. Plus, it's 
insanely performant. I don't understand how all of this is working so seamlessly inside of Final Cut Pro. Taking a look here at the Bloom slider, let's go ahead and just dial up the strength. So right now it's at 1 8th. That's like if you're using a Pro Mist filter and you buy the 1 8th or the 1 quarter. Um, so let's just pump it up to 1 quarter. And in fact, I'm going to adjust the threshold so you can really see what it's doing, but know that it's very subtle. So it's taking those bright parts of the image and dynamically giving you this nice bloom, which works perfectly with the grain that's being applied. But then going further down is halation. If we take a look at the rooftops here, and right now it's set to standard, I'm just going to bump it up to nuclear. And you'll see that that's giving us this nice red fringing along the brightest parts of the image. It looks so good. It brings a lot of warmth to your image, makes it feel so filmic. I am just absolutely in love with this halation tool. And then finally, at the end, it's got some grain over the top, and this grain is accurate to the film stocks. So we've got our size 35 mil. We could go all the way up to 65 mil, which gives you a finer grain. Or maybe you want 8 mil and you want big, chunky grain. You can see that up here in the sky. Hopefully, YouTube can bring that out to you. But then you'll notice, okay, so I switched it to 8 mil, but everything's blurry now well that's because eight millimeter film would be lower resolution so what you can do is adjust this film resolution so maybe you want that big chunky grain but you don't want the low resolution all you need to do is just dial up your film resolution bring that all the way up and you get the best of both worlds so again the name of the game is customizability super good at that let's say Maybe I want to go back to the 35 mil, but I want a little bit more grain in the highlights. Well, we can just dial that in, drag that up. So we've got this basic look over all of our footage. Took me a very little time. Again, we can go in and get this looking exactly as we want it to. There's as much control or as little control as you want. And then on top of that, we have all of these other LUTs we can try. So let's maybe try something like the Fincher look. I love the Fincher look. It's a little bit contrastier. Um, it just has such a filmic look with the greens and blues. So really happy with this particular look. And again, you can see all the halation and the blooming and everything on this first shot. So make sure you check out Eric's video if you pick this plugin up because you're going to have a much deeper understanding of how everything's working and how to get the most out of it for your videos. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.